guys. I'm going to be talking about Hanuman today. I wanted you to see a picture of Hanuman. And also see this one. Because he's often show, showed opening up his chest and the divine feminine and masculine or Sita and Ram is sitting there at his heart. Good morning, everyone. Turn this off just a minute. Uh, we're going to be leading up to a peak pose today, which is why I recommended blocks and a bolster. Um, we're leading up to the splits. So I'll go ahead and tell you up front. Does it mean you have to take the full splits? I cannot do the full splits, and I certainly don't expect you to. Um, so that's why we're going to be warming up the lower body. We'll be warming up the hips and the legs to prepare for that. And then we'll use blocks and bolsters to stack up underneath us so that we're not feeling like we're taking it to the point of um, no coming back, so to say. <laughs> I wanted to lead up to the splits today because um, a lot of the poses in yoga refer back to Indian myths. And within the myths, there are stories, there are characters, there's a moral to the story. And I think it's important to be kind of a, a purist to the practice and to honor the tradition of yoga and its culture and where it stems from to share these things with you. But it also gives us some contemplative food for thought. It makes it more of a mind-body practice instead of just physical exercise. So it takes it to a deeper level. So to talk about the splits today, it's called Hanumanasana, and it relates back to a character in these stories called Hanuman. Now, these stories are fables and tales. Hanuman was a monkey, and he was part of a monkey uh, warrior um, army, so to speak. And he was born a monkey because his mother actually was cursed at one point. And he became very devoted to this king called Rama, who had a wife called Sita. And there was a demon king that was trying to take over the land, and he was trying to, you know, take the land from the people and trying to take more of the people underneath his kingdom. And he decided he would kidnap Sita, which was Rama's wife. When he kidnapped his wife, he took her into, you know, some other land and had her imprisoned. And Rama was beside himself because he wanted his beloved back. And so he sent out armies to go try to find and rescue his wife. And he teamed up with this monkey uh, army and he befriended Hanuman. Hanuman in the story, uh, when he was younger, thought the sun was a big piece of mango. And he had all of these superpowers and super strengths. He could fly, he could jump, he had agility, he had amazing strength. He could become enormous, he could become really tiny. It kind of makes me think of the superheroes, Ant-Man and Wasp Woman, who can get big and really tiny. Kind of has that. That's probably where they got some of their ideas, is from these old historic tales. And he went up to the sun, tried to eat it, and uh, got slammed to the ground. Um, and he broke his jaw. And so Hanuman actually means broken jaw. Um, anyway, he became this uh, warrior. He led this army. He befriended Rama. And he followed his intuition to the end of India, where the ocean was. And there was an island, which is Sri Lanka in our modern day. Um, he saw this island, and he just knew, he intuitively knew, that's where Sikhs is being held. And so to prove his point, he went running as fast as he could. And right when he got to the seashore, he leapt, right? Think about leaping. It's like doing the split in the air. Think of a ballerina, like leaping in the air. And he leapt to the other land mass and he discovered, sure enough, Sita is here. Well, they saw that he was there. They set his tail on fire. He used the fire to burn down the area. And he made sure Sita was okay. He leapt back to find Ram to tell him. And he said, okay, let's build up this uh, landmass or bridge between the two lands to rescue my wife. And they were able to rescue her. So basically, the moral of the story is he took a leap of faith. 
he believed something to be true and he took action and he discovered what he intuitively knew was true. And so anytime we're doing this pose, it's supposed to be a time where we reflect on, are we stuck? Are we stuck in our ways? Are we stuck with old ideology? Are we stuck in fear? Are we stuck in inaction? Are we really improving, evolving, and growing in life? Can we take a leap of faith? Can we take a risk? And the reason why I wanted to bring the story up today is I've been looking at, you know, everything we've done since the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, I talk about the astrology of the upcoming year and the numerology code for the year. And they were both uh, alluding to this is a year to take risk and for the risk to be rewarded. This is a time to be strong. This is a time to be courageous. And this is the year to take action. And the Chinese New Year, when we talked about it being the water tiger, was saying the same thing. And then when I listened to the energy behind the full moon last week, it was saying the same thing. So we have all these energies coming in with all these other sciences saying, this is the year to do that. So I thought we would put it into play and have some fun and build up to this pose with this in mind. So we're going to start on our backs and you can separate your feet about hip distance. And I would suggest your arms overhead in kind of a Y-shaped formation with your whole body creating kind of an X-shaped formation. Since we're talking about this particular character today, which reminds me of our modern day superheroes. So as you're here laid out in the shape, notice how it expands and opens the front side of the body. Notice how you get a little extra sway in your back, your low back, a little extra lift in your chest, in your heart space. And then I want you to begin breathing in and out through the nose so that you can follow the wave of the breath as it travels up and down your body. Now, really, it's just filling up your lung sacs, but as your lungs are filling up, you'll feel the belly swelling and then the chest swelling. You'll feel the chest deflate and then the belly deflate. And just close your eyes as you surf the wave of the breath. Consciously control your breath so that every inhalation is inviting you to go inward and every exhalation is centering and preparing you for the practice. There's lots of scholars who look at these old stories and say that they're really depicting some sublime psychology of the higher self. And that it's wisdom that was written by the ancient sages. Hanuman represents strength and courage. He represents devotion and faith. He represents karma and being of service to others. He also represents evolving past the monkey mind, the mind that is often hyperactive and jumping from one thought to another. So notice how your conscious breath work helps you to begin to control your breath. How it helps you to mind your thoughts so you're not as distracted. You loosen the mind so you're not as obsessed with the thoughts that appear. Now let's go ahead and start to open up the hips. So draw your knees in towards your side ribs. Pick your hands up to find your feet. And you're using your hands to pull the feet downward into Ananda Balasana, happy baby pose. As your knees play wide open, you're anchoring down through the lower back. The 
long, slow exhalations to chisel down any tension you might be feeling here. Take one last breath. And then gently draw the knees together, hug the knees in towards your belly and chest. This is the wind release pose. Sink your left foot down to the ground. Fly the right leg up in the air and link your hands behind your thigh. Push up through your right heel and drop down through the right toes. So the whole sole of the foot is facing the ceiling. If you feel more limber here, you're welcome to slide your hands to your calf. You could also potentially take the peace mudra around the big toe. Opening up your hamstrings. Rounding the back. Remembering the legs take us forward into action or help us to flee when we feel in danger. Go ahead and gently release the right leg, plant the foot to the floor. Inhale, fly the left leg skyward, linking your hands behind it. Checking in with the flexibility, finding your edge, which may mean bringing the hands up higher. So find what's appropriate for you in the now. Smooth, deep breaths. Like a supine padakustasana A. And on your next out breath, go ahead and remove the hands, sink the left foot to the floor. Roll to your right side body, push down into your left hand to casually bring yourself up to sit. When you come to sit, we're going to do a side bend before we get up to stand. Hands resting beside the hips. Inhale, let your right arm rise. Exhale, curve over to your left. Keep your sits bones rooting downward. Keep the top arm elongating and your breath really breathing. This is Chandrasana Crescent Moon. Inhale, let's bring ourselves up to the top and exhale, just take your left arm overhead, curving to the opposite side. Openly, breathing deeply, any through any tension that may be housed around the lungs. Firming strength and courage fill up my body. Inhale, rise up to the top. Exhale, bring your hands to Namaste at the heart. Link your fingers together. Extend your arms out in front of you. Lift the arms up overhead. And then sweep the arms around behind your back. Relace your hands. Shoulders roll back. Exhale, you can hinge forward in front of your hands. Inhale, use your knuckles to rise up to the top. Exhale, bring hands back to prayer position. All right, we're going to go ahead and get up to stand. We're going to do some sun salutations. <clears throat> when we go through these sun salutations, I wanted to uh, say to everyone, if you start to feel any aggravation in your hips or your low back when we're scissoring the legs apart, feel free to monitor that. And you can always keep your hips square and the leg straight back versus coming down like this, okay, when we get to that point. So there are modifications. 
Once you come to stand at the top of the mat, root and ground your feet. Line up your legs. Lift through the navel and heart. And bring your hands to prayer position. Look straight ahead with your eyes. Inhale, let your arms sweep up and overhead. Exhale, hinge forward and down to your roots and masana, your standing forward fold. Drive the heart a little lower towards your knees. Let the head be heavy and shift your weight forward into your toes. Nice in breath, lift halfway up. Hands can rest on the shins. Exhale, pour back down to your Uttanasana. Affirming here, nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back for making bold leaps. Inhale, step back into your plank position. Now, when you step into your plank position, we're going to go ahead and lower the left knee below the left hip. We're going to shift the foot back, lower the right foot down, and reach the right arm skyward. So it's like a modified side plank. Now, if you want to strengthen your right hip, you're welcome to lift the foot in midair and power out through the leg as though you're trying to reach to the back wall. Stabilize through your core. Good, let your right foot descend again. Spin to the back toes, right hand comes down. Bring it back into your plank to build some upper body strength. Exhale, land your right knee below your hip. Send the foot back, lower the left foot down. Take the modification of side plank to the other side. Now we're gonna be playing with side plank today as well. So when we advance this pose, you're always welcome to come back to this particular version. Inhale, if you wanna straighten the hip, lift your left foot. Splay open through your toes. Tighten up through your kneecap. Draw in through the navel and try not to hold the breath. Lower the left foot, spin to the back toes, left hand down, returning to plank. Shift forward and drop down to a low push up. As you inhale, slide your heart through and up to upper facing dog and exhale, roll back over your feet to downward facing dog. Now let your palms get heavy. Lift your hips up and away from your shoulders. Draw your thighs in and power them back. So you're opening the back of the knees. And let your head bow between your arms. Now slip the distance between the big toes. Walk the feet a little closer. When you're ready, inhale, lift your right leg just halfway up. When you're lifting the right leg halfway up, you're reaching back through the right heel, keeping the hips even and keeping your shoulders even. Now swing the right foot all the way forward and through between your hands. Once it lands and you've got the knee over the ankle, you're gonna inhale, lift into crescent lunge. When you come up to your crescent lunge, the arms are framing the face. We're trying to open the iliopsoas muscles um, on that left leg. That gives us that extension. All right, on the exhalation, we're gonna keep the arms splayed out like wings of an airplane. We're gonna hinge out over the front thigh. Inhale, rising back up to your crescent lunge, gazing straight ahead for better balance and more mental focus. Exhale, come forward, hover, hold, breathe. We're doing one more. Inhale, lifting up to crescent. Continue to breathe here, in and out through the nose. It's preferable. All right, hinge forward again. This time, bring your hands to prayer position at your heart. See if you can shift your weight onto the front leg and lift your left foot off the ground. 
Balancing, breathing, strengthening the right leg. When you're ready, hands down, back toes down, and this is where you may need blocks. You may not, but you can test the waters here. We're gonna straighten the right leg, and we're gonna turn the left hip towards the front side of the room. So we're trying to roll the back thigh and hip towards that front foot. Lengthen out through the vertebrae. Now this is a standing form of Hanumanasana. This is another version of standing split. You are also welcome to soften your elbows and to drape the upper body over the front leg. If your hamstrings allow. And then we're gonna flow. This will be our inhale. On the exhale, the head is up and the front knee is lunging. On the inhale, we re-straighten the leg and we can bow the head and heart. Good, and come back to the lunge as you breathe out. We're flowing with breath, inhaling and exhaling. Now this time, stay in the lunge. You may want to lose the blocks to plant the palms to step into your plank. Exhale, crank forward, lower down to chaturanga, that low push up. Inhale, rise to up dog. Exhale, roll it back, downward facing dog. When you come into Adamukasvanasana, create this inverted V shape with your body. So when you hear Jay Hanuman, which you'll be hearing in some of these songs today, it's talking about victory. And it's the victory we can establish over the monkey mind that can get us into trouble. On your next in-breath, we're going to step the left foot now forward and up between the hands. When the left foot comes forward, we're going to slowly bring them up to crescent. Finding your balance. Finding your breath. Finding your drishti. Where you place your eyes. On one spot that's unmoving. Once you have your stability, we'll start to move. Exhale, hinge forward. Stacking the torso over the front thigh. Inhale, draw it up. Continue to breathe in and out through the nose. Exhale, hinge, lay the arms. And we'll do one more. Inhale, build it up. On your next out breath, hinge it down. Inhale, hands to heart and lift the back leg. All right, hands down, right foot down, and this is where you may want the box again. Each side may be different. One side may be really open and free. You may not need the box at all, but then you get to the other side and it's like, whoa, I need the floor to come to me. So roll the right hip around towards the front. Lengthen out through the spine first. Clip your left hip closer in towards your navel so that you can also feel the work in the IT band. Then drape down if you have more flexibility. No worries if you don't. Respect your limitations. And then we'll start to flow. This will be the inhale. And the exhale, we'll lunge the knee, engage straight ahead. Inhale, we're pressing into the left foot, moving into standing Hanumanasana. And exhale, lunge the knee. Then do one more of those back and forth. Pausing in that lunge, losing the blocks. Stepping the back foot forward, 
lengthening out through the spine, and then exhale, pouring down. Next inhale, root to rise. Exhale, hands to hearts. Moving into the second Surya Namaskara. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift halfway, create some space. And exhale, roll the belly towards your thighs if you can. Bring the head down closer towards your knees. No intention to touch, so no worries about that. Inhale, take it into your plank. All right, so we're going to step it up a little bit from plank. We're going to slide the left foot through, through the underside of the belly towards the front door. And we're going to lower the right foot down and fly the right arm sky. So this is where, if you need that modification, what we did earlier, left knee down, right foot down, right arm up, you're still in a version of the pose. And that works too. If you want to amp this pose up, you can take a hold of your left foot and carry it out in front. But I will say, the first time I ever did that pose, I got a cramp in my privates. <laughs> so don't get a cramp. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back to plank. We're going to slide the right foot through. Now, if that's too much, remember you can lower your right knee and come to that initial side plank that we did in the first round. If you feel good here and you don't feel a cramp coming in, you can take a hold of your right foot and sail it out in front. All right, full plank. Lower the knees and push back for a moment into extended child pose. Just want you to regather your strength, regain your focus through the power of your breath, and everything fall away for a moment. Clean that connection back to your higher self. The poses are fun. The poses are expressive. The poses can bring a strength and flexibility. But take it a little deeper today. Where have you been feeling the need to take a risk, to take a bold leap of faith? Let this practice empower you to do that. Inhale, rock up, hands and knees. We're returning to the practice. Lift your knees off the floor, come to plank. Shift forward and drop it down to chaturanga. Inhale, open the heart into up dog. Exhale, rock and roll back to downward facing dog. Now this time we're gonna start with the left leg. Remember on the first side, we started with the right. Close the gap between the big toes. And then inhale, lift your left leg halfway up. So you have a dorsi flexion in the foot. You're pushing and powering out through the heel. The hips stay even. The shoulders stay even. Now swing the left foot through between the hands. We're going to automatically come up into our crescents. And once we have our stability here, you're not as wobbly, you're going to see if it's possible to arch back. That's too much. Bring the spine back up. All right, exhale, hinge forward like we did earlier. This time, make the left foot a little heavier. Ignite your hamstrings so that they're strengthening. Bring your hands to prayer position at your heart. You're going to shift forward and up again. Same as what we did before. Except this time, we're going to find the blocks if you need it. 
to stack here to keep the hips square, or you may need blocks, or you may be able to bring the hands to the floor to dip lower with your head and heart, and to scissor the right leg skyward. A standing form of the splits. When you're ready, bend that front knee, lower the back foot down. Determine here if you need the blocks or not. Straighten out the front of leg. Exhale, lunge the knee. Do that twice more. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, lunge the knee. One more time. Then once here, lose the box, flatten your palms, step into plane. Shift forward, lower down to chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog. Exhaling to downward facing dog. Once you return through that vinyasa to come to downward facing dog, this is the point in the flow where we ensure we're connected to our breath. A breath that can bridge the mind to the body. A breath that stabilizes the mind and the heart. On your next inhalation, the right foot's gonna step forward and up between the hands. We're slowly coming up to crescents. Finding our stability first. And then perhaps arching back to get a little bit of a deeper stretch in the psoas. And the psoas is often connected to the sympathetic nervous system and our trauma response. So this is a good thing to target and to clear out. If we don't want to be stuck in the past and stuck with our emotions. All right now we're going to come forward, hover and hold this time. Make it a little stronger. Bring in a little bit more fire. And then hands to prayer, shift up to the balancing pose. If you need to keep the hips square, this is where I would recommend hands to blocks and just be there. If you're available to scissor and to lower the head of the heart, you can move towards this variation of standing split. Being calm, being patient. And the breath can bring in that calm sense of patience. All right, bend that front knee, lower the back foot down. And this is where you can determine do I need blocks to straighten the front leg or not. All right, hopefully you can see how this practice is preparing us for the full splits. <laughs> Exhale, lunge the knee. Inhale, straighten the Exhale, lunge the knee. Do it once more with your breath. Good. Now bring that back foot all the way to the top of the mat. Lift up halfway upon arrival. Exhale, lower back down and in. Inhale, all the way to the top. Exhale, hands to heart. All right, we're going to do one more flow. Inhale, the arms circle wide and overhead. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips and bow out. Inhale, half a lift. Exhale, let go again. Inhale, take plank. All right, so already, you know, we're changing up our side planks. If you just want to be basic today, if you need more gentle, Approach, this is what you're gonna do. 
If you want to try amping it up, you're going to flip to the outer edge of the left foot, stacking the feet and lifting the right arm. To make this a little easier, if you're trying to do this but struggling, your right foot can cross over and you can use that leg and strength and as a way to keep the hips elevated. Stephanie's amping it up and hovering the right leg. You can also do that. Many styles and expressions. All right, full plank. I know this is hard for us ladies, but try to stay with it if you can. Flip to the outer, to the right foot. If you need the more gentle approach, right knee on the floor or crossing the left foot over. If you want to advance it, you can cover the left leg. Stay true to yourself. Come back to plank. Sink to your knees. This time, circle the arms around, two palms up at your feet. Child pose. The heart may have started to speed up. Your breath can slow it down. If your wrists were getting a little sensitive, give your hands a break. There's no need to prove, there's no reason to be competitive. Just be present. All right, we're ready to flow again. Inhale, stretch your arms out. Drop that hands and knees. We're taking plank. I'm going to go through a vinyasa. Shift forward, lower down to the chaturanga. Inhale, rise to up, facing dog. Exhale, roll it back to downward facing dog. Make sure there's not a wide, wide space between the toes. So maybe just a few inches. All right, this time we're going to inhale, lift your right leg up. Now, it's okay to keep the hips teed up together if you think it's going to aggravate your hips or low back. But if it's freeing and available, lift your right leg sideward, scissor the legs more, 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 and then swing the right foot through between the knees. Establish that knee so it's anchored right over your heel and then come up to your crescents. From your crescent, feel free to take a back bend. Feel free to leave it out if that's too much. For the one in your body having your experience, stay responsible for yourself. On your exhalation, you can take your hands to your blocks and do the balancing pose with the hip square or you can return into your standing form as well. All right, now we're going to start to change it up. Bend the front knee long enough to descend your left foot, come back to lunge. Plant your left hand, take a twist. Right arm reaching in the air, belly spinning towards your front thigh. Exhale, hand down. Lower the back knee, chin, foot. Okay. I would suggest maybe having blocks beside your front foot. If you're super limber though, you don't need them. Like you may not need them. There's days where I get a little trapped in my left hip. So I'm going to use the blocks just to test the waters here. Then we stretch the right leg, lifting the toes. Now this is half Hanuman. This is our half split. Fold over it if that's available. Smooth out your breath. And affirm mentally to yourself, I choose to dwell within infinite possibilities. The infinite possibilities are what if I take this risk? What if I succeed? 
And even what if I fall? So what? Get up again. We may learn something along the way. All right, inhale. You're rocking forward, establishing yourself on the right foot, lunging the knee and dropping and sinking through the hips. So when we're dropping through the hips, again, it's opening up that psoas like we did in the crescent lunge. All right, we're gonna do that again. Flex the right foot. Straighten out the front leg, fold over it. Okay, come forward again into the half lunge. You're melting your hips towards the floor. Power three, one more time, okay? Flex the right foot, lift the toes. I choose to dwell within infinite possibilities. So I made a really strange risk the other day. It sounds minor, and it is minor. But it was weird for me. I'm going to share it. We uh, went to a frame shop to get something framed that I got them for Christmas. And the girl that was helping us, I don't know what it was about her energy, but I felt really drawn to her. Never met her, never seen her before. We left, go ahead and come forward to this old foot. And that week, I had two different times where she flashed in front of my face. Like, I was like, why am I thinking about this girl? I barely met her. So I decided, you know what? I don't really have a lot of friends in Nashville. I just moved back from Franklin. Something's going on here energetically. She wouldn't be coming across my mind. So I went back into the store and I just introduced myself. I'm like, hey, this is gonna sound really weird, but I met you the other day. And she reminds me of my best friend who died a number of years ago. She has the same energy. And I just said, I just moved to Nashville and I don't know, I just felt drawn to come talk to you. All right, shift the knee back. Now we've started a friendship, but I took the risk to speak up, right? Okay, lower the blocks away. Plant the palms, step back, down up. Okay, we're gonna take that sequence to the other side, slim the distance between the big toes. Inhale, lift your left leg. Now, again, you can be halfway and you can keep your hips square if you need that protection. But if you can handle that asymmetry through the hips, scissor the leg more and more and more. So when you're scissoring, you're pointing the toes, which is a little different flexion in the foot. When you're ready, swing the foot all the way through between the hands. And we'll go ahead and slowly sink the back knee. And then I have to tell my boyfriend about it. I'm like, this is really weird, right? But I just feel drawn to this person. Now walk the blocks back, flex the foot. So taking leaps of faith and taking risk doesn't always mean, you know, gambling your money away, <laughs> right? You know, it doesn't have to mean something bold and crazy like that. Maybe it's stepping out of your comfort zone and talking to a stranger like I did. Maybe it's you're feeling a little um, restless in your job. You want to try your hand at something else. Maybe you've been feeling called to move. All right, come back to the half lunge. All right, come back and hold the half split. All right, hopefully feel like we're warming up enough. And I really want these muscles to be prepared before you take it any deeper. All right, this was a set of two. We're gonna go through a set of three, just like we did the other side. Come back to half lunge. Bring your 
Returning to the half splits. Slide your left knee back. If you can sit on your heels, you can sit on your heels, and I'll show you what we're going to do. Because you may need all the props. Okay. We're going to go back into the half lunge and then we're going to slide it out into the squats. But we're going to be safe about it because we're not cheerleaders. <laughs> Might be, I don't know. We're going to step the left foot forward. Now, when we take that lunge, this is where the bolster is going to slide up underneath. Now, I know on this side, generally all I need is a bolster. But if you know that you're tighter, you can take your blocks under the bolster and then slide the left foot out. You see what we're doing? We're, we're propping ourselves so that we're not going to injure ourselves. Now, the most important thing is if you don't want that asymmetry in the hips, right? If you weren't scissoring, you don't flop onto that. Do you see how I'm flopping and that's creating this crankiness here? We want the hips to be level and even. And again, you may not need all of that. You might be able to do it with just a bolster but I don't want you to feel um, panicked, stretching too deep. I want you to feel supported in it. Okay, so let's try that. So the left foot comes forward into that lunge. And go ahead and think about your body already. You want the blocks first and the bolster on top. Perfect. Or just the bolster. Yeah, you make it look easy. <laughs> And she smiles. <laughs> and then what you do is you kind of rock your hips back to flip the toes, and then you slide the heel out. And then you may not be able to do this, but you might be able to free up your arms. Some of you might be able to even fold forward. Again, you don't have to add this in. This is this is a whole nother element, but something to play with if you feel called to. Yeah, that's nice. I was a cheerleader and always struggled with this. Yeah, I never could do splits. I think some people genetically are more made for it than others. All right, now to come out, I push down through my hands and pull up through my pelvic floor and slide the left foot back and then back in the lunge. And then you can stick over. Now the right side for me is tighter than the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and have a block under. Step over with your right foot. And then lean back and flex the ankle and slide it through. Square the hips. Matt, maybe freeing up the arms. Again, that's not required by any means. And if that feels freeing and you want to try pouring over, you may. Don't you love it with props? <laughs> well, I certainly couldn't do anything without. I like it with props. I mean, I don't want to do it without props anymore. After I learned how to do it with props, my body doesn't fit this way. You look great though with this. Yeah, I should use a blanket. Yeah. And then inhale back up. Push down through your hands, slide back with your right foot, and that should give you a safe exit. Good. All right, we're going to come down. Now we're going to give the legs some restoration. We're going to create a slide. One block on its tall height, one block on its middle height. 
and then angling the bolster up like this. And I can help you if you've never created this. Once you have this, you're going to scoot towards it, line your legs up, lay your arms open, and close the eyes. And this music's revving up when I want it to calm down, so I'm going to change it. <laughs> So think about the action we have put into our lower body today to build up to that peak pose. Now we're elevating the feet and the legs so that everything's draining in the direction of the belly. And we'll eventually move towards the leg, the heart, and the mind. Haman is said to be representative of the faith that gives us strength. Faith that's not based on what we're told, but rather direct experience of truth. Through experience, we often realize that we're actually discovering what it is that we do see. And oftentimes that's within. There are depictions of Hanuman where he is opening his chest and inside where his heart is, it shows Rama and Sita. And in that story, that couple represents the divine feminine and the divine masculine being integrated at the heart. It represents both giving and receiving love. the lover and the beloved. As you rest and reside here, I want you to move into your heart. Move into that rich abundance that dwells in the heart. Or you can tap into your own courage, or you can tap into your own faith, or you can Discover your own discipline and devotion and what you lie loyalty towards. So be reflective on this as your body takes rest.
Inhale, stretch the arms overhead. Exhale, cup a hold of your knees and draw them towards your heart. We're going to take the supine twist. So as you inhale, expand your arms and let your knees roll to your left side. Loud cheer. Take several big, bold sips of breath. There's another story about Hanuman where Rama told him to go to a mountain to get these medicinal herbs that grew there in order to bring back to those that had been injured in the fight. Hanuman not only goes to the mountain to get the herbs, he brings back the entire mountain. And that story has always reminded me of that biblical references, having the faith that moves mountains. Inhale, draw the knees to the chest, wrap the arms lovingly around. Affirming, I choose to dwell with an infinite possibilities. Inhale, open the arms, let the knees roll right. Now lounge here and breathe here. Roll completely to your right side. Push down into your left hand to come up. Take your bolster down from the blocks. Sit on top of it. Get in a cross legged position and then slide to the edge. And sitting up nice and tall, hands to the lap, eyes gently closed. Just observing the breath as it comes and goes. Allowing your hands to prayer position to seal our practice. Taking the theme that we've seen so far this year, showing up in other sciences to bring it into this science, the science of mind. To break out of the pandemic mindset and to take the risks that we feel called to take to take those bold leaps of faith. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thanks for joining today. Thank you. Showing up and doing the splits.